All right, so before we get started, totally feel free to skip ahead and not pay attention to what I have to say here. But just so you know, there is a merch store available for the channel over at Designed by Humans where you get really cool stuff like this glitching out robot news host and all kinds of wonderful goblin related designs. So if that interests you, go right ahead. I also have books out, boom, boom, go ahead and check them out. Okay, thank you so much for sticking around to your own volition. I appreciate it. The Ice Die. Yes, there has been a tremendous amount of Wheel of Time content on the channel recently and I Love it! But uh, don't worry for those of you who it doesn't interest, I'm going to be getting back to regularly scheduled programming as soon as this season is over. That being said, probably the number one question I have been getting since the show dropped is what's the deal with the Aes Sedai? Hence why I did already drop a who are the Aes Sedai video, but now there's this other question that's percolated to the top that the show hasn't yet made abundantly clear. And that is what are the different Ajas and what are their purpose. And so in this video, we are going to be going over them starting now. I forgot to turn on my highlight light, which I'm sure 99% of you would have never noticed, but now I hate that opening. So it's been made abundantly clear already in the show that the Aes Sedai are not perfectly unified, and that is directly carried over from the books. The Aes Sedai are not one cohesive groupthink organization. Instead, they are a bunch of self-important people who think their way of thinking is the best and no other way of thinking is acceptable in general. Some of them are great and wonderful and open-minded, but a lot of them, not so much. And while they do serve the light and not the shadow, can't get into that because spoilers. As the white cloak so clearly make clear, just because you serve the light doesn't mean you're necessarily good. But there's not necessarily an evil Aja We'll get into spoilers at another time, but some disagree with the mission statement of certain Ajos, one in specific. And that would be the first Aja we're gonna talk about here today, the Reds. The ones that, you know, wear red a lot. The most prominent example from the show so far is Leandrin, and from the books would be Elida, a character we're not sure if they're actually gonna bring into the show yet. And this is the one Aja that the show has pretty much made the mission statement of abundantly clear, in even the cold open. We see a bunch of red sisters chasing a man who can channel and doing God knows what to him because all we get is a pan away and then, oh, it hurts. Oh, whatever's happening down here is the worst. Oh, it sucks. And if that doesn't make it clear enough for you, yes, the Red Aja is entirely devoted to the hunting and stilling of men who can channel, which does seem kind of evil on face value, but as is made abundantly clear in the wonderful animated shorts they've put out, men who can channel are a tremendous global threat. So the Red Aja's purpose can't really be debated away. They have to exist. Men who can channel are walking nuclear weapons who are slowly going insane. They can't be allowed to run amok. So a lot of people have problems with them, but it's like, all right. Now, one Aes Sedai we see briefly in the show being burned alive at the stake by the White Cloaks is a member of the Yellow Aja. And this is another one whose purpose is extremely clear cut and straightforward, and that is to master the arts of healing. I get his full bad day. Every Aes Sedai does learn basic healing. Think of it like the difference between a medic and an MD. Yellow sisters hyper-focus in becoming the best healers in the world and specifically know how to heal a lot of things that other sisters might not that go beyond just, you know, stabby, stabby, shooty, shooty, cutty, cutty, burny, burny. I didn't notice this until many rereads later in the series, but because healing actually requires a lot of the one power and a very adept hand with it as well, yellow sisters tend to be quite powerful in one way or the other. Either they are extremely adept with their weaves or they are in general more powerful because healing on face value takes a lot. Not the most demanding, but the most like demanding thing you'll come across in daily life of an Aes Sedai. Now, I would like to make clear at this point that some Anjas do have broader philosophies associated with them that go beyond just these mission statements. And that's actually the reason I chose these first two, because I think they're really direct, definitive example of that. Yellow Sisters tend to follow a very direct purpose. They, as people, really want to be problem solvers, and they are like, scientists in a way, not as much as one other Anjas but they definitely like the experimentation and mastery of their craft. Red Sisters, 
Think of the more as hunters. They're going to be ones who are out of the tower quite a bit, out engaged in the world because they are literally tracking down and hunting others. As people, they tend to be highly motivated and pretty ideologically driven. And falling right into a similar vein as these two in terms of having a specific purpose and ideology, you have the Green Aja, otherwise known as the Battle Aja. These are sisters that are specifically preparing for the last battle. They tend to be the ones who are the most aware of and believing in prophecies and seeing a lot of the signs of them coming soon. They're also the one Aja that regularly bonds more than one warder because they are expected to be in battle and the usefulness of having one borderline Captain America enhanced person can only be made better by a second. There's also a stereotype of them being more promiscuous because they have more warders. Do with that what you will. But if you're in the greens, you're probably someone who's ready for a fight and you are interested, engaged by, thrilled with getting in dangerous situations, missions, things along those lines. And then we got the fucking nerds! Okay, I'm gonna go over like the two big nerd Ajas real quick. First, we have the Browns. They are researchers, specifically focusing on the gathering and preservation of knowledge. You will see Browns most of the time just occupying their space in the White Tower and reading and reading and reading and reading and reading and reading. And if they take a warder, very often those warders just practice and practice and practice and practice. They don't go out much. A lot of you probably fall into their personality traits, staying indoors a lot, being a more shut away, and, you know, like in books. Then on that flippity floppity other side of the coin for giant nerds within the White Tower, we have the White Aja. These are the philosophical and logical explorers of the White Tower. I personally can't imagine that you are a super powerful magic user and deciding I'm gonna spend my life logicking and reasoning, and that's coming from someone who was on a debate team, but nerd recognized nerd and good on you for being the kind of person who likes to throw a fireball, but then wonders, but why fireball? If you're a mathematician or logic person, this is where you're gonna fall and I'll laugh at you for it, but it's fine, you weirdo. And then we have maybe the most hated Aja from the real world perspective, and that's saying something with the Reds' existence, but hey, it's an Aja of politicians and mediators, so them. Not really, these people are genuinely fine within the books, but the gray Aja is those who love the idea of sitting down and mediating a situation or just being the advisor to a ruler. Though we do see advisors to rulers who aren't grays. Again, a lot of these Ajas overlap and it's more about the focus and drive of what really makes you go as a person. But again, these sisters are often seen out in the world spending long amounts of time in various kingdoms, whether it's related to their homeland or not, just trying to help the world maintain peace and resolve disputes between houses. So if you really like the political meanderings of Game of Thrones and that thrills you, titillates you, you might fall into the grays. And then we have the tryhards of the tower. No, I'm kidding. Kidding, these people are great. And that's going to be the blue Aja, which is actually a lot smaller than I thought it was until I started doing research for this video. They're only the sixth largest Aja. Wow. But they have a focus on essentially righteous justice and activism. They're always trying to stick up for the people who are the most tread upon. And that's actually where Moraine falls. She is a member of the Blue Aja, which is again, a wonderful example of how all these kind of Ajas do overlap because with her going out and trying to find the dragon, you'd think she'd be a green, but no, she's a blue. I like to think of these people as activists. If you're someone who's constantly worried about, you know, the right and wrong of the world. And obviously this is setting you up quite well to be an opposite to the people who go out and love stilling men who can channel who are essentially afflicted with something they can't control. Yeah, there's big beef between the blues and the reds. This is where you would fit oh so nicely into. Now I've noted a couple of the sizes of the Ajas here and I'm wondering what you think the biggest is because I actually didn't remember this and I'm going off the wheel of time wiki and apparently it is the red. Aja. The Red Aja, according to the numbers in the books, has the most sisters, which does make sense. We've seen the most of them in the show. Here's actually the order, according to the Watt Wiki, of the size of the various Ajas. And I will finally answer one question for you. What Aja do I fall in? Well, according to the quiz I'll have pinned down below, I am a yellow. I like to heal people. I like to help others. That's very much so true for me. But I'd love for you guys to take the quiz as well and post it in the comments down below what your result was. We could do a general poll here to see what is the most common Aja amongst the channel. But before we end the video, we're going to get into spoilers. So if you would not like one specific element of the show spoiled for you, please leave in three, two, one. Zero. There is a black 
Aja, an Aja of sisters who serve the Dark One, and really their belonging to other Ajas is only a general overlay of a miasma of a disguise. In reality, they're trying to carry out the agenda of the Dark One. Now, how could people possibly follow the three oaths and maintain a allegiance to the Shadow? You can't lie. Well, Black sisters manage to actually break these oaths through some ceremony. It's a bit mysterious to us. But all that is known is they have the three oaths lifted from them, and from there they can go about their mischievous ways with a giant advantage over normal Aes Sedai around them. They can lie, they can directly use the power to kill as they please, and they have allies across all Ajas that are trying to accomplish the same goals as them. This allows them to move politically in ways that other sisters cannot, and it is a serious cancer to the existence of the White Tower. But its existence is largely denied. Most Aes Sedai will vehemently claim the Black Aja does not exist, and any claim of its existence is blasphemy. But that is actually the end of the video now, and I'd love to see what Ajas you have with you down below. But if you would like to tell me that you're actually a member of the Black Aja as well, just leave a little question mark after your color, like respond with the color, maybe the emoji ball or something, and then put a little question mark there. And if you have that, I know you're like me. And you're actually a member of the Black Aja. <laughs> anyway, thank you everyone for tuning in to this bonus content wheel of time video. Like and subscribe if you have not already. And hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here. Have a good one. Bye!